There is a real concern in high tax states like New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, California, etc., that this is going to cause a flight, that people aren't going to be interested in buying property in those states and that values will go down. How much of that is true in your view? Well, we've already seen a mass migration to the center of the country. So even before there was tax reform, you had people leaving California, New York, New, York, New Jersey, all of these coastal cities that have been financial empires, technical empires, are really seeing an exodus where folks are coming to Houston and Dallas and Salt Lake City and Denver and Portland and Seattle. Tax reform is going to accelerate that. And the reason it's happening is because people want to avoid all the taxes they're now going to have to pay under the new plan. So if I own a house in New Jersey, and I know it's not a very specific question, but if I own a home, should I be concerned, and I want to put it on the market in, in two years, should I be concerned that the value is going to go, go down? I don't know that the value will go down that much because mm -hmm. there's such an inventory shortage across the United States. We've become this landlord nation where most people are not selling as many houses as they used to. They're holding onto those properties and renting them out. So that's going to counteract what would normally be a larger price drop due to tax reform. So I don't expect a drop. I just don't think you'll see the price gains that we've seen over the past few years in the coastal cities where taxes have been high. But, but, but how does that square with the idea that you're predicting a mass migration? A mass migration. Those were your words. I mean, I see this as, in terms of cash flow, a pinch in the wallet, but in terms of ownership of homes, a kick in the asset. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do think a lot of people are going to move to the center of the country. That's been happening already, and it's because the coastal cities are so densely populated, prices are so high, so people have been able to move because of telecommuting and technology, and they've been able to move because we can fly as easily as we used to drive. So you're just going to see more people going to Ohio and Michigan and other parts of the country that really were economically dead five or ten years ago. And what's interesting about that, I think, is it used to be that in California we owned the future. We felt like everything was happening here first. And now you see that swagger, that confidence in the center of the country. People in Detroit, people in Texas think they own the future. And I think tax reform has really given a boost so, to that argument. So, so will, this you're just be, see will this mass migration be led by, by individuals who decide that they want to move somewhere else? It would seem to me that to have that kind of mass migration, you have to have large employers, big businesses, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, people on that scale, Amazon. moving, I mean, moving, moving, Seattle. moving. Amazon is leaving Seattle. All right, and, and, and then Facebook go and Google Boston. leave go Silicon Valley, right? I mean, or or repatriate well, large chunks of their workforce. Apple. Silicon Valley is going to leave Silicon Valley. That's already happened. Google employs more engineers outside of Silicon Valley than it does in Silicon Valley. And if Google can't afford Silicon Valley, then no one can. That is the most insanely profitable business in the history of technology businesses. So I think that is a harbinger of things to come. The technology companies, the Wall Street companies, they are chasing the talent. The talent is chasing affordable housing. We are going to see both businesses and people move to places that are more affordable. And it's going to be good for the country. It's going to be so good for the country. You shouldn't have that many people making so much money in just a few cities. It should spread to the rest of the country. It'll depolarize us politically, and it'll balance things out financially. It's going to be great. Yeah, I, I did some analysis once, Glenn, years. years ago that the capital gains from Facebook's IPO at the time could have paid off Ohio's budget deficit in its entirety. Just that one-time <laughs> thing was something like that. But here, you know what's funny? is if it wasn't for this new tax bill, all we'd be talking about is higher interest rates. Eventually, mortgage rates are going to rise. Isn't that the maybe one of the other big risks to real estate? You know, you know I've been worried about that too. Every year, lions and tigers and bears, I talk about inflation, but the fact is that there's these massive deflationary forces in the U.S. economy. You've got Amazon giving people price comparisons online. You've got robots, you've got globalization. The cost of everything is going down except for one thing. There's one little handcrafted thing where that cost is going through the roof. It's houses. Houses are the one asset that has seen massive inflation. So every year, the government prints more and more money, and the Fed does nothing about it because mm -hmm. there is no real inflation threat except where it hurts consumers the most, right. which is... Their mortgage payment, their, we were, their house payment. We were showing, Glenn, um, the markets that you think are going to be the weakest in 2018, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and New York. I would imagine tax is part mm -hmm. of that. They, they are, you know, 
by coastal cities here. Um, in, in terms of rents in these areas, is there something to be said that, that the rental market could improve on the, on the notion that owning a home is less attractive? I think we're going to see less acceleration in rent, less acceleration in home prices in these coastal cities. There's still desirable places to live. You're not going to see an evacuation of San Francisco, but you are going to see a lot of people moving to other places. So that's going to take the pressure off rent. It's going to take the pressure off home prices. And where it's really going to go crazy is in a place like Vancouver, Washington, where you can commute to Portland, but avoid the state income tax of Oregon. We have people just clawing through the walls trying to get to uh, commuter cities like that where they can have the best of both worlds. From an investor standpoint, Glenn, what's a city, if, if I could invest in a home someplace else, what would be the hottest city right now in your view? Seattle, San Antonio, Dallas, Denver, Houston. Houston got flooded and it's still going to be hot. People are crazy. Nothing will stop them from going to a place where they San can really Antonio is a, a good call, home. Glenn. That's it. That's it. We don't realize good San call. Antonio is like the, the eighth biggest city in America now. It's unbelievable. Hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.